Australia, Brevin Thompson is back to talk about the live action remake of Pinocchio directed by Robert Zemeckis and is of course the remake of the 1940 animated classic. Now when it comes to live action Disney remakes I mostly have not been a fan of them for the most part. Uh, I would say my favorite out of all of them is probably the remake of The Jungle Book from uh, 2016 that was directed by Jon Favreau. But that's about it, really. The rest of them have been decent to mostly crap because mostly when it comes to like the classic Disney films like like The Jungle Book, uh, Cinderella, and Beauty and the Beast and The Lion King, and especially Aladdin. I mean, when I watch those films, the classic animated films that we all know and love, I'm like... Yes, I mean, that those are films that will live on forever, and when it comes to the live-action remakes, I'm just like, why already remake something that's already perfect the way it is? It just always reminds me of that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And when it comes to this live-action remake of Pinocchio, it's, uh, well, it's a film. That's all I can say. It, it's it's a film. But when I heard that this was directed by Robert Zemeckis, I'm like... I mean, and I know he's made great films. I mean, he did the Bats of the Future trilogy. He did uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He did Forrest Gump and Castaway. I miss that guy. I'm just like, where's that guy? I mean, I miss him making good films. I'm just like, can I have that guy back, please? And... Thank you. Now, when it comes to the original Pinocchio, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's one of my favorites of the classic Disney films, but I certainly liked the film back when I was a kid, and after watching the remake, I had to, like, rewatch the original film for the first time in at least, like, 15 or 16 years. It's been a while for me, and it still holds up, even though there's, like, a few elements here and there that kind of, like, bother me. But that's about it, really. But I can see why so many Disney fans hold Pinocchio so close to their hearts. And when it comes to the remake, of, it's basically the exact same story as the original. Although there's like a few minutes of like new stuff, which I'll talk about. But for the most part, it's the exact same story. I mean, Geppetto wishes for Pinocchio to become a real boy. Blue Fairy comes in, brings the puppet to life. And Pinocchio goes off to school, runs into Honest John and Gideon, uh, goes to Stromboli to perform at a puppet show, and then he eventually goes to Pleasure Island and almost gets transformed into a donkey, goes to save Geppetto after he gets swallowed by Monstro, the giant whale. Uh, well, in this version, uh, he uh, Monstro is not a whale, per se. I mean, he's basically a sea monster that, I mean, but mostly looks, for the most part, like a whale and saves Geppetto, and eventually transforms into a real boy, and the end. It's the exact same story. I'm just like, you're basically like copy and pacing. It's just like taking elements that a lot of people know from the original film, and then copy and pasting it into the remake, and then boom, remake. Just like, after seeing so many of these remakes, I'm just like, Disney, please stop. I would say the acting is probably my favorite thing about the film. I mean, you have Tom Hanks as Geppetto, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as the voice of Jiminy Cricket, and Benjamin Evan Ainsworth as the voice of Pinocchio. I hope I pronounced his name right, or at least close. But that's about it, really. There's also a few characters who get... Uh, less screen time compared to how much screen time they got in the original film. Mostly the Blue Fairy and Honest John and Gideon. Those are like the three characters uh, that I'm aware of that like got like the least amount of screen time in the remake compared to how much they were given 
in the original film. Uh, because the only time we see the Blue Fairy in the remake was when she brings Pinocchio to life, and she sings When You Wish Upon a Star, and that's about it, really. And when it comes to Honest John and Gideon, of course, they bump into Pinocchio like they did in the original film. They tried to persuade him and to perform for Strombelli's show, and at first, the, uh, uh, Pinocchio is... Uh, going along with it, and of course we get the hey diddly dee, an actor's life for me. You get it. And Jiminy shows up and uh, tries to persuade uh, Pinocchio into going to school, which he does until the headmaster kicks him out and tells him that school is for real boys and puppets belong to a puppet show. And that's when Honest John and Gideon come in and convince Pinocchio to perform for Strombola's show, which he of course does. But that's about it, really. I mean, we don't see them again, I mean, uh, trying to persuade uh, Pinocchio to go into to Pleasure Island like they, like they did for Pin to Pinocchio in the, in the original film. And how Pinocchio gets to Pleasure Island, it's like after he escapes from uh, Stromboli's carriage, and he just gets snatched by the coachman who, like, t takes uh, Pinocchio... Lampwick and a bunch of kids to Pleasure Island, and that's about it, really. And when it comes to the Pleasure Island sequences, it, instead of, like, having the kids, like, smoke cigars and drink beer, instead they're given root beer, which I think is kind of a mistake, really, because in the original film, I mean, we see the kids, like, drinking beer, smoking cigars, and, like, beating the shit out of each other in the, like, uh, roughhouse thing, but, and of course they're, uh, committing random acts of vandalism, which they also do in the, uh, in the remake, I mean, them causing vandalism, but that's about it, really. I just think if they left the smoking and drinking thing in the remake, I, I understand if they don't, like, want to, like, show, like, underage drinking and smoking. I get that. I totally get that. But, I mean, the original film kind of, like, had a point of, like, adding the underage smoking and drinking because if they did that, they're going to turn into jackasses. And in that case, quite literally. And compared to the other live-action Disney remakes, this film, for the most part, does not have the soul of the original film. I mean, it has, like, three good performances, but that's about it. And when it comes to the CG, it looks bad, especially when uh, when we get to the scene where Lampwick uh, turns into a donkey. It just... The effect, it looks unfinished. In fact, like, most of the CG almost looks unfinished. I mean, there are some moments where it kind of looks polished, like Jiminy Cricket, for example. But there are, like, some moments, like I said, with the donkey scene. It just looks like there's, like, some effects that don't look finished. It's just, like, were they even trying to, like, try to make this as believable as possible? It's just, like... I don't know. And I think it that Disney made the right move to, like, not put this in theaters and instead just dump it onto Disney+, Plus because, thankfully, I didn't have to spend any money watching this. So, yeah, that's definitely a plus for me. As for the new characters in the remake, there's a former ballerina named Fabiana, I think that was her name, who performs for um, Stromboli's show using a puppet named Sabrina that Pinocchio really likes. But their appearances have no effect on the plot other than just introducing new characters. And there's uh, Sophia, a talking seagull, who assists Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket in the finding Geppetto. And that's about it, really. That's as far as, like, some of the new stuff uh, goes. I mean, they introduce new characters that have no effect on the story. So overall, I think that this film is very disappointing, like most of the live-action Disney remakes that we've seen uh, up to this point. And like I said, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Because it they've 
changed like a few things here and there, but it's the exact same story except in, in, in live action, but that's about it really. So I'm gonna give Pinocchio 2022 a D-. <laughs> So what did y'all think of the film? Let me know in the comments below. And guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Looking forward to doing more videos really soon. And if you want my thoughts on older new films, of course, you know where to find me.